first and foremost, like this is urgent time um, that you need to be doing your bookkeeping. You need to get everything caught up. Um, if you are, if it's not your skill set, which it's most likely not your skill set to do your bookkeeping in your business, um, that you're finding a money team that you want to work with to do the bookkeeping. everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Female Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, once again, Krista Gurka, and another guest episode, a returning guest, Danielle Hayden, founder and CEO of Kickstart Accounting, who's the money team in our Beyond the Movement coaching programs. And I actually had the pleasure of meeting Danielle for the first time in real life, not on screen. It was so fun. It was so great. (laughs) I got to see her from the chest down. I got to see her legs. So um, it was great. She came to the summit that we just had in November and it was really wonderful. She gave such two amazing, amazing talks just about money and finances and mindset and everything. And we had planned this before the summit because I do think there's a lot of misinformation that's given to business owners about what they should do at the end of the year. Um, And so when I first started on business, I had no idea like what I was doing. And I was hearing all this different stuff of get money off your books or like, you know, I just was so confused. And so I think this is a great episode and you're such a wealth of information. So why don't we just go ahead and get into it for your clients? What are some things that you recommend? And I know every business is different, so you can give that caveat if you want. Um, And I know we've been talking about these in our mentorship groups the last, like, what are some things that you're recommending should be at the top, like three in a list of business, what business owners should be preparing for at the end of the year. So I'm going to speak to like non clients because our, so our clients will have their bookkeeping complete. So for somebody who does not have their, uh, if they don't have a money team, if they don't have a bookkeeper, um, they don't have a tax tax accountant, then first and foremost, like this is urgent time. Um, that you need to be doing your bookkeeping. You need to get everything caught up. Um, if you are, if it's not your skill set, which it's most likely not your skill set to do your bookkeeping in your business, um, that you're finding a money team that you want to work with to do the bookkeeping in your business. Because all of those other things that you just mentioned, like you know, spending money so you don't have profit, get the get the money off your books, and those tax strategies people talk about, you don't even know if you have a profit you know, uh, unless you have the bookkeeping complete. Um, And you want to start finding a CPA that you're going to want to work with for tax season. So you want to find somebody that you like, first and foremost, Mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to talk to, and that will have an end of the year check in with you. All of our clients, um, they receive monthly financial reports, or, or quarterly, depending on what they're signed up for. So they're seeing that information on a regular basis. And then in December, for our tax clients, we are meeting with them to talk about some of these these strategies. So that's first and, and foremost. Once you know that your bookkeeping is complete and you have financial statements to work with, that's kind of like part two of this, this checklist is 1099s are going to come first. So that sneaks up so on us. It's like happy new year's, bam, <laughs> start getting 1099s out the door. And so we want to make sure that we have W9s for all of our contractors anybody that you have paid over $600 um, that is not a C corp or an S corp. If you're not sure, I default to collecting one from everybody. Anybody that you paid over $600, we're collecting those W9 so that we can send 1099s at the end of the year. Yeah. So let's just clarify just in case yep. people don't know what a 1099 is. Um, most people do, but just in case, can you just explain who gets a 1099? Yeah, 1099s go to all of our contractors. So employees do not receive a 1099. Uh, It is anybody who we have worked with on a contractor basis throughout the year. So sole proprietor, LLC, um, like I said, if they're a C-Corp or an S-Corp, they might not 
get a 1099, um, default to collecting W9s from anybody who you've paid over $600 and then work with your money team to determine who gets a 1099 and who doesn't. Um, really as a business owner, I always say, um, I give you permission to stay in your lane as a business owner. Your job is to run your business and your money team. It's their job to make sure that the 1099s are going out. Um, you might need to facilitate the conversation for the W9s, but from there, you should not have this on your plate in January. Yeah. So that's a good example. I think people get confused over what's 1099. So even, and anyone over $600, right? Is that federal? Is that like across like all yeah. states? Oh, yes. Yes. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Doesn't matter. Right. Okay. No. So $600. Um, and then, so somebody maybe that was a photographer that came and did picked a photo shoot for you and it was $1,500, 1099. Yep. 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 So those are the little things. Usually the big things I think people remember the bigger, con you know, a Pilates studio has an independent contractor. That's an, an instructor for them. Those ones they remember. I think they did forget about like that photographer that did a photo shoot for you. Now, is this, I've heard now, maybe it's different in different states, like attorneys and get 1099s as well. Attorneys always get 1099s. Okay. So yes, always 1099 your, your, your attorney. That's why I say collect W9s from everybody that you do business with and then let your money team decide who gets the 1099. Perfect. Okay. Now, what about, I receive a 1099 all the time. What? Well, is it a 1099 from like my credit card statement or from your payment processor for my payment processor? Yes. yes. Okay. So your, everyone's payment processors will give you a 1099. Your tax accountant should be requesting that information. You want the amounts on from your payment processor to match your QuickBooks or whatever accounting software where you're using. If you're on cash, cash basis financial. So again, you want to make sure that that your 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 point of sale software, if it doesn't match your accounting system, that you understand why. But really, what your tax accountant is going to use is that 1099. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay, so now, so that's 1099, and I did I do love how you preface that by saying if you don't have a money team, get your books in order because I think I'm just so accustomed to having my books in order that it that piece slips my mind. And I forget that not everyone is at that same stage. So that's a really, really important factor. Get on it sooner than later. Yeah. Um. So, okay. So you've got your 1099s. They're going out to your staff. What is it that employees get from us as the employer? So you should be using a payroll system. Um, we use Gusto with all of our clients. I can't recommend Gusto enough. Um, and Gusto will be sending out all of the payroll forms for your employees. They will be filing your 941s. Please do not try to do this on your own. You should not have employees if you do not have a payroll provider. I know that there's there's less CPA firms that do it now. Um, I really recommend if you have a CPA firm that's doing your, your payroll for you, it's time to move to a provider like Gusto because Gusto makes it really easy for all of your employees to log in, update their information, download their forms. So the only thing that you as a business owner need to be aware of as we like close out the end of the year with your payroll provider is that if you've paid any of your employees outside of payroll, making sure that those, those dollars get captured inside the payroll system. An example of this would be the gifts and, and bonuses that are going out at this time of year. We really want to make sure that those are going through payroll because this is not a Danielle rule. This is an IRS rule. Technically speaking, anything that's over $75 needs to go through payroll. You can't just gift people cash and gift cards. We want those to go through, through bonuses and payroll. So if you have changed any, or if you've given anybody anything outside of payroll, we want to make sure that that's captured. And then for you as a business owner, there's two big things that I want you to review before the end of the year for your own payroll. If you have any health insurance, um, if you are paying for health insurance, through your business as part of a group plan that that is going through your payroll and you see that as a deduction on your 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 um, paycheck stub. So as a business owner, you want to see your healthcare, uh, the amount that you as an S-Corp employee are paying towards your group plan. You want to make sure that's being deducted on, 
on your pay stub. And then any 401k or retirement contributions that have been made that are are that are going through payroll have been deducted from your, your paycheck stub. Got it. Makes sense. So I love Gusto. We're actually transferring to Gusto as of January 1. Um, we've been on a variety of payroll processors. Some of our listeners, I know, use QuickBooks as their payroll system. So what, because maybe they just hired their first employee and what, what, okay, what, and I know that it's like, e, get a, get the payroll system, but if they don't have it now, like what should they be doing? So, Is there an option? So as of, of 2024, like as of the new year, it's a great time to move payroll providers. So you can easily have QuickBooks file your 941 and then move to Gusto at the beginning of, of 1-1. Um, I like Gusto because I think it's a easier, cleaner to use platform than QuickBooks. QuickBooks, you can also choose your subscription as a business owner. And I have just seen way too many horror stories where the business owner wasn't paying for the higher subscription and they thought that QuickBooks was paying their payroll taxes and filing for them. And they weren't, uh, I mean, I, I watched this client. Well, it didn't happen on our watch but when we got involved and did their catch up. Um, they owed $200,000 over the years. I mean, this was seven years in business and I don't, under, I really don't understand how they didn't get in trouble beforehand. And there's no coming back from something like that. Yeah. So you have to make sure that your payroll is being paid through your payroll provider. Gusto won't let that happen. And I think that's why I like Gusto so much. They have so many checks and balances within their software that you literally can't do it wrong. Like mm -hmm. they will stop payroll if you don't give them the information that they need to make sure it's done correctly. And I like that checks and balance. I agree. I think that it's worth it if you're going to start hiring employees, even if you think you're only going to have one or two employees, it's just easier to have a system that will really, it's built for this. This is what yeah. it's built for. This is what it's built and for. And Gusto's like the same price. Like I think the yeah. last time I checked, Gusto is the same price as QuickBooks. So it's not like I'm asking you exactly. to pay more. And then as you grow, Gusto has all the other, um, add-ons. You can add on PTO. You can add on, you can send in your offer letters through there. Yep. Um, you can do benefits. Uh, they partner with guideline for 401k. And I know some people are like, whoa, whoa, Danielle, I'm not doing any of that right now. I'm not saying you have to, but when you are, are growing a business, those things like sneak up on you. And then it's, yep. you're not looking for another provider. It's built right there. Yeah, I agree. And it's it's online. So your employers, employees can go right, they can log into their own account, they can get their information, they can update the information. It's like you send people an offer letter, they update everything right in their system, all their payroll stuff. So I think that's great. You did talk about bonuses and gifts. I would, I'm going to refer all of you to listen to Danielle's podcast, which is Entrepreneur Money Stories, correct? Yep. Yes. Yep. Go to Entrepreneur Money Stories. We'll link it up in the show notes, but she does, she did a couple really great episodes recently about giving bonuses, about gifts. She also did a series on the different financial statements. So how to understand a PL, which stands for profit and loss, how to understand a balance sheet. So her podcast is really great. So definitely check out the entrepreneurial money stories for sure. Um, because I actually learned some stuff through good. there too. Yeah. Good. It good. was great. Can I, can um, I clarify one thing yeah. for people? Cause I don't want to I don't want to leave anyone confused. So I mentioned as an owner that to to double check your payroll stub. I just want to be clear that's only if you're an S Corp. So if you are an LLC, you are not going to be on payroll. So please do not put yourself on payroll. Do, you're not going to be deducting any health insurance or, or, or retirement benefits. So this, this is if you are structured as an S Corp, then you as a business owner, you have to be on payroll. You have to be paying yourself a reasonable salary. And that is where it becomes really important for your health care and your retirement to go through your, your payroll provider so that it is grossing up your salary. So you're hitting your reasonable comp and then you get the business expense that that deduction by having that correctly. If you are an LLC, you will not be on payroll and those will not apply. Yeah. You, well, let's correct that just in case they're confused. You can be an LLC and file as an S corp. Cause yes. now some people will be like, wait, I am an LLC. So 
my first three years in business, I was so confused by that. Like I couldn't, I actually kept a note in my notes tab reminding me, yes, I'm an S corp and yes, I'm an LLC because I was so confused. So for business owners, you can be an LLC legally. You can be a, a single member LLC and file for the IRS as an S corp. And this is why, you know, I'm not going to, I am going to brag. This is why our our mentorship programs are beneficial because you have someone like Danielle or Kelsey on her team that can really break down the difference for you. It's not our fault that we don't understand this terminology. No, no. they didn't teach any of it, and it's confusing. It is you so confusing. An LLC <laughs> legally, like how your entity is created, but then you file as an S corp. So, in our group, I think Danielle this year helped couple businesses transition to an S corp and file the paperwork. They should have probably, they were appropriate for it even before, but again, it's like a big, you're like, oh my God, it changes. It's a big milestone. Yeah. It changes scary. And you're like, it's what's, what's that phrase that they say? Like the evil, you know, is like the the, the discomfort, you know, is like worse than whatever. So people just kind of stay status quo. So having Danielle as an asset is great. So And you might be paying more in taxes than you should be. So by becoming an S corp, like the benefits are that you, there are tax savings available to you and, and knowing when, but you don't want to do it too soon. So just knowing when to become an S corp is really important. And I think we've spent a lot of time in your group talking about that, which Mm -hmm. you think has been so beneficial because we are skimming over this really important (laughs) topic that we could spend, we have spent hours on helping people understand. So uh, yes. Yeah. And sometimes we get confusing information from our tax specialist or our CPA firm or person as to like when it's appropriate, when it's not appropriate. And again, I think Danielle does a great job in our group of kind of like reading between the lines. So in our, in our industry, like as a physical therapist, we'll get people to come after back surgery and they're like, oh, my doctor said X, Y, Z. And you're like, well, on the surface, that's kind of true, but that's not really what's happening. So it's like nice to have somebody else that can kind of give you both sides, right? Good analogy. And, yeah. So, okay. So you talked about tax saving. So now let's move into your books are all reconciled. You're doing well. You have a clear understanding of where you stand in business. You're ready to send your book. I mean, your are to your tax specialist. What are some things that are myths? Let's go with the myths first of that we hear frequently in the world about like spend, spend, spend at the end of the year to decrease your profit. So I know you have a very, um, like you have a very mm-hmm. strong opinion on this. So <laughs> yes, go I ahead do. and give your, uh, give your, what you think about Like, this. let me add them. Let me add them. Yes. <laughs> It actually breaks my heart. So I, I, I get really upset when I hear business owners say my tax accountant told me to go spend $20,000. Like, what are you spending $20,000 on? So you're going to spend, you're going to spend a dollar to save 40 cents. It, it's not applicable. And I had a client just two years ago, it's like fresh in my mind who she was working with another CPA. Um, the tax accountant didn't ask her any questions, just said, you need to go spend this money because I don't want you to, to have to owe in taxes. She went and she bonused herself out and then spent the money. Um, she gave her team bonuses. She paid for all the stuff. Well, here, what she, her and the tax accountant didn't talk about was that she was planning on opening up a second location and it was going to be in March. Well, January and February are her slow time. So she spent all of her cash on lowering her profit. Then she slams into January and February where she's super slow. And then in March, she ended up taking out so much debt, lines of credit, uh, credit card debt in order to support, because she already signed a lease. She was opening up the second location and she had to move forward with it. So she came into this new business with, with debt and look, we're two years out. The thank God she was able to like thank God we were working together and we really coached her through yeah. the debt mentality and it's okay to have debt in your business mm-hmm. and she moved forward with it because that second location is really carrying the first location now. Yep. 
but it's just really? a really good. Oh wow, that's impressive. For a second, yes. I was I was like nodding, and I was like, the first location I had to carry the second for a while, which is usually normal. But you were like the second. I took me a while to yeah, get there. the second location is carrying the first location now, and 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 so I. I just want to be clear. It's not that your tax accountant is telling you something wrong, like <laughs> shame on the tax industry. I always say the tax accountants, their number one job is to file your tax return. And in turn, they want to lower your tax liability. The reason why you want your tax team to speak to your bookkeeper is because we want to make sure that the strategy aligns, that we're thinking through what's next in our business. And when we work with our clients, we're helping them manage their business. We're not mm -hmm. just managing it for taxes. We're helping them manage their goals. Like where do they want to see their business grow to? So we have to, we can't spend money at this time of year um, unless we have a plan, like unless right. you really need to be spending that money. Now I will say here, I want to give you a, a, a tangible example of when would be a, a appropriate. If there's a conference that you know that you're going to go to next year and you already have decided that you want to go to, um, go ahead, buy the ticket. You know what I mean? Like we do that, like yeah. go buy the ticket in December. Um, I'm not saying it's going to save you any money in taxes because if you're profitable again next year, you're going to have the same problem again. Right. But go buy the ticket. It's fine. Right. Because you know that you already want to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll go back to that analogy of like the physical therapist, right? So with your bookkeeping team, most bookkeepers, you're working with them on a very regular basis. Like you're maybe either, like you said, you're getting reports with them every month, maybe even every other week, at least quarterly, right? So they understand the story of your business. You're speaking to them. And then your tax accountant is similar to like the surgeon, right? So for example, patients see physical therapists once, two, three times a week, right? After a surgery, the doctor sees them at the time of surgery. And then again, so the physical therapist can be the liaison between, Hey, this is actually what's happening. And this is why we're moving in this direction or that direction. Whereas, you know, the surgeon kind of sees like a 30,000 foot view. And so it's similar with your tax account. And by the way, the other thing that I've learned with a tax accountant too, is that ultimately you as a business owner will always be responsible for what's on your taxes. Okay. So even if they're the ones filing it, right. When push comes to shove, the idea is they always send it to you for signature and you're supposed to look everything over and understand everything that's going on, et cetera, et cetera. When I look at my, and I've been doing this people for 15 years, I, it still is like a different language to me when I look at my, well, it is taxes. a different language to be because fair. It's, yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's even, I don't even language. know what I'm looking at. I don't. So when they send it to me, I'm like, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm looking at, you know? So I think what, you know, Danielle was saying, it's a good to have, you know, to have a good share, you know, handle on your numbers. I think another example, like, what do you think about this? So, um, maybe if you need a uh, new equipment. So let's take a Pilates studio, for example, right? Like, you know that you want to add a new reformer in the studio, which will increase ROI, which will increase everything. They have Black Friday deals where you can get free shipping. That would be, you know, provided you're, it's an expense, that would be a good expense to have on the books before the end of the year because you know that you're going to put it right to use. Of course, uh, yeah. of course, like things that you know that you need, you're not buying it to save on t on taxes. Now, I, I, I mentioned um, as part of our prep list is that you want to have a CPA that you want to talk to, that you actually like talking to them because you should be talking to them right now and say, hey, this is my profit. Uh, I, I want to buy these three things. Does it make sense to buy them? Like have that conversation with them. Not all tax accountants want to do that. And so mm -hmm. I think that's what makes, uh, you know, when we work with our clients so unique, we want to talk to them to explain the tax return. Like we are walking through the tax return together. We're talking to you over the summer. While most tax accountants are in the Bahamas, we're yeah. talking to you about your uh, mid-year check-in. And then we have an end of the year check-in to make sure that we're having those, those touch points. So don't just go buy the reformer unless you know that your bookkeeping's right and that you've talked to your tax accountant and you know that it's the right decision. Yeah. I, I, uh, just recently got a bill for my tax accountant and at $660 an hour, I'm afraid to talk to my tax accountant. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, that's just a little aside. So by the way, 
I will no longer ever feel guilty about my prices after yeah. looking at an itemized bill from an, my, an accountant or an attorney. So yeah, I know that's a whole other, that's a whole other episode. I do, you know, the other thing that I think I definitely want to bring you back on to talk about was what you talked about with like debt mindset. And I know we've talked about this a little bit. Um, I think that that would be a really good topic to get into because people are so, um, th there's just a lot out there about yeah. having debt. And, and, you know, when we run a business, there are times where we, we will have debt. And sometimes you need that in order to get to the next level. And who knows? I mean, nobody thought that there was going to be a global pandemic that happened, you know, so there's always things for that. So, okay. Let's think now about, we were an S corp. We file as an S corp. We are on salary. Okay. What are some things that if we want to prepare, and this is again, a conversation I have with our tax advisor probably is if we want to prepare to make sure that we've either put enough away for, for saving for taxes or, you know, what are we kind of looking at? I, I can just speak when I became an S corp and I was trying to figure out like reasonable comp and all of that stuff towards the end of the year. I would speak to my tax uh, advisor and say, listen, this is where I'm at so far. This is where the business is. Do you have some sort of estimate? And I would, I would alter my like last paycheck sometimes through salary so that um, I wouldn't have a huge tax bill at the end of the year. Now, I don't know how you feel about that or is there something that people can, yeah. If the, is there something people can do just to like, I know it's always an estimate, I know yeah. it's hard to say, but like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, are yeah. there things that people can prepare to do? And I think, by the way, you should do this before you go out and buy the new reformer. Like, yes. make sure that you've planned for taxes. Yeah, good, good point. So when your bookkeeper sends you the financial reports, so our clients can choose between weekly, monthly, or quarterly. Um, unfortunately, our quarterly clients, they got their financials in October and they won't get anything else until the, the end of the year. That's why I love the monthly plan so much. So you should be looking at your financials, at least monthly or quarterly. At that time, you're asking yourself, what is my net income? Net income, you go to the profit and loss statement and you go all the way to the bottom of the report year to date. And what is the net income of your business? So sales minus all expenses. That number, you're going to be paying around 25% of your net income. So we call it a tax reserve. So we, we send our clients their financials. We call it the tax reserve. What you're paying in estimated taxes is based on last year's profit. This year, if you're having a great year, and you have paid a minimal amount in estimated taxes, it's really important that you have enough money saved. So look at that 25% of your net net income. What's also really important is that as an S-Corp, you're paying yourself a reasonable compensation. So you want to pay yourself. If you had to hire somebody else to do what you do in your business, in your area of your size of, of business, how much would you have to pay that person? Because it's really important that you're not taking any owner's draws from your business until you've paid yourself a reasonable compensation. So that reasonable compensation, it's going to lower the amount of net income that your business mm -hmm. is paying. So it's going to lower the amount of self-employment tax that you're, you're paying. So that's what I think it's actually a really beautiful thing to do is to pay yourself a bonus that in December so that you're lowering the amount of net income that you're you're paying, but only to your point, if you have enough in, in reserves or you know that you can make that money up in, yeah. in the first quarter, right? Or, yeah. or you, you know that you go on um, extension every year, so you're not going to pay your taxes until September. Maybe you're comfortable with a payment plan with the IRS. So there's lots of different cash management strategies, but I love the idea of a bonus through payroll, through payroll. In, in December. Yeah. So this brings me to a quick question that we've actually gotten in the group a little bit and mostly because of like ERC credits coming back, which so if you don't know what ERC credits, they were employee retention credits from 2020. So basically the government said, if you keep your employees on payroll without having them having to go to unemployment, 
there was like a tax benefit. Anyways, some people are getting them back. Some people are not. They're being dispersed. Who knows what the yeah. algorithm is, but that will show up in other income right now. So it's basically on the balance. It goes like on the balance sheet right now. And they're not sure. Do you know? I don't even know. I know that they're supposed to go back and amend the the tax filing. But let's so let's just ask this. You see, usually on a on a statement, people will see net operating income. And then if there's any other income, there's like a little space oh. between that and the bottom. So we get some questions about like what what is that amount of money? do because sometimes accountants somebody said to us this week my accountant told me to put it there and they just didn't really understand like what that meant yeah so talk to your talk to your money team about it Mm -hmm. talk to your bookkeeper talk to your tax account um here's the problem or like i guess it's the safeguard in accounting you have to put it somewhere so like (laughs) there's often times where like it can't hang out on the balance sheet because it's not right it's not equity. And so it has to flow through the profit and loss statement. So you really need to talk to your tax accountant on whether or not when you're configuring that tax reserve number, if you should be doing it before or after that that figure. Got so it, it depends yeah. on what that other income is for. Um, some people get like ta- uh, cash rewards from their, their, their credit card. That is taxable. And so it should be included in that, that tax reserve. Um, other things are not, but it's an accounting reconciliation entry that needs to be done from a bookkeeping perspective. So just ask your tax accountant, like, just that's a great question. Literally, yeah, literally that's a great answer. I think to be honest, I think a lot of tax accountants just, they're all go. They're all learning a lot of too. Like, what are we it's supposed changing. to do with this? And like, it's, it's changing every year. It yes. changes every year. And so they're like, just put it. I, I thought that's exactly what that's kind of what I told the business owner. I said, I, they probably are not hundred percent sure they're So they're like, just right now, put it as other income. And then they're going to figure out like what to do with it. Cause you have to claim it. Well, it they'll put it, somewhere. they'll put it in the, the tax return where right. it needs to go. So right. from a, sometimes the, to confuse the matter even more, sometimes your books are different from different your, tax. your taxes. Yeah. So they're, they're telling you to put it there because from a bookkeeping perspective, that's where it needs to go, but they're doing what they need to do with it on your tax return. Right. Not a fair answer, but yeah. It I just get it though. It makes sense. It's, it's one of those like really bizarre things that's happened. So, yeah. okay. So I think that was great for 2023. Okay. So now for businesses that are moving into 2024, um, I mean, I'm going to, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say, if you do not, if you own a business, I don't, I don't care if you're like, well, I just have a studio outside my house. I just like, just take just out of it. If you are accepting money for your services, you own a business. Yes. You should have some sort of mm, financial you should have like QuickBooks or something like that. So that you requirement, could, like not yeah. just should it's a yeah. requirement. Like people are like, I'm too small. Like, no, you're no. not. The IRS says from the day that you accept money from customers, you are a business and therefore you have to have an accounting software and a way of keeping records. Yes. So I'm going to say, if you don't have that, don't think of yourself as a failure. People have spreadsheets for eons and eons and eons. But in 2024, that could be a great intention of I'm going to put my books on QuickBooks. The other thing I'm going to say is I know that it's overwhelming. So get help. Hiring a bookkeeper was the best. It was the first hire I made outside of like an instructor, you know, and I had all wrapped up in my head. Like, I don't know, people are going to look at my books. They're going to look at my numbers. What's the judging? And all that chatter, 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 silly. It's the best decision I ever made. So why don't, can you talk a little bit about people like maybe get investing in a money team, like what the benefit to that is, and then maybe just some other intentions people could start thinking about as you move up the chain in business maturity, I guess. So, you know, (laughs) let's get your books in order. And then what are some other maybe financial goals people could set? Yeah. We're often one of the first few hires for, for our, our clients, because you can't, you don't really know if you can afford to hire additional employees and team members without the bookkeeping in place. And 
our focus is really, you know, helping you manage your business. And so, um, I would say, you know, find somebody who you like to work with, right? Like that's key is finding a company who their core values align with your core values. So at, at, at Kickstart, like we specifically, you know, we work with a lot of women because we want to have this space where there's no judgment. You can come and ask literally any question under the sun and we will happily answer your question. You could ask us the same question over and over again and we will happily answer your question because we get it. And our mission is literally to help women business owners understand their numbers. Like that is our complete mission. We're not here for the taxes, we're not here for the IRS, like we are here for for women. So find find a money team that aligns with your core values as a business and that you align align with so that you can partner with them because once you have a money team once you hit like the bookkeeping is creating the foundation so if you try to file your taxes or work with a financial advisor without the bookkeeping it's like building a house on a swamp yep right we have to build the bookkeeping we have to have the foundation now once i have accurate financials that I can count on throughout the entire year. Now, when I go to meet with my financial advisor to think about saving for retirement, putting my kids through college, like all of the other things that we need to do um, as, as people and individuals, paying ourselves more, paying paying ourselves ourselves more. more. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Going on vacation, like anything. Um, We have bookkeeping to refer back to when our tax account says, sure, I'd love to give you a tax estimate. Can you send me your income statement? You have financials to send them. So I say that there's four people on, on your money team. It's your bookkeeper creating the foundation. You need a CPA, so somebody who's going to file your taxes. And you need a financial advisor. They're the individual who's helping you plan for the future. And then you need a business coach. Like your business coach helps you take that information and gets you to the next level. Yeah, that's great, 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 great advice. And I really, I encourage people, the first thing that that we look at when when they usually apply and we're looking at the structure of the business I always ask them like what their money team looks like. And oftentimes people will have like an accountant that does their, their tax, like, but I'm, I'm more interested in, do they have a bookkeeper? Because so many people, one, they get super behind on reconciling their books and they're like four five, six, seven months behind and they're just overwhelmed by it. And so they don't, it's just one more thing. And I'm like, you don't have to do it. It's you also don't not, have to do it. It's also yeah. not right. Like if you're doing your own bookkeeping, that would be like me coming in to teach a class at your studio, Krista. Like you yeah. don't want me teaching a class. I am not, I am not qualified for it. I shouldn't be teaching a class for you. And, and you as a business owner need to stay in your lane. You shouldn't be doing your own bookkeeping. So when you're making business decisions, when you're deciding whether or not to bonus your team or to bonus yourself or to become an S corp or literally anything, <laughs> but buying the next reformer. Like you have to make those decisions with the numbers in place. So you need somebody who's making sure that you have accurate information throughout the entire year. So your tax account shouldn't be the one doing it. One, I believe in a checks and balance. Your tax account needs to be separate from your bookkeeper. They have to be able to say, nope, you're wrong. Here's the right way to do it. I completely agree. And it's just another set of eyes. Like you might see something that that they don't see. And then you can ask, like, they see some things that you don't see. Um, And to them, it's just numbers, right? To you, it's some, as an owner, sometimes gets emotional. So you're like, no, I need X, Y, Z. But a bookkeeper can say, hey, I noticed that this month marketing went like up 25%. And you're like, oh, I I did this strategic. Like if you, there's a reason for it, right? But if not, you're like, no, what happened, right? Or sales go down. Can we hang on that? Like, yeah. oh, that was strategic because you had asked me, like, as we look to 2024, yeah. one of the things that we want to do is think about like, what is our intention, right? I've, I talk so much about setting an intention for the year, because if you are in growth mode, mm-hmm. then you should be spending money in advertising and marketing, right? It's important for you to be spending money in advertising and marketing if you are in growth mode. So when we send our clients their financial statements, we say, hey, your, your, your advertising and marketing is, is high. It's above what we consider healthy. It's then your job as the business owner to say, hold on, what's working, what's not working. What's my intention for the year. And that's when you could light bulb. Okay. Oh, wait, 
I'm in growth mode. Of course, my marketing is high. Like I am investing in my growth this year. And so that makes sense. No money team is going to be able to say, well, your intention for the year was, you know, right. like they can help you, but like exactly. you as a business owner need to know, like, what are you doing this year? Yeah. And I think too, I, I like the checks and balances because, um, for example, this year, earlier in the year, our revenue was going up real. I was like, we're above in revenue, but our profit was staying the same. And I was like, what? either we're leaking money somewhere that I can't figure out where it is or some something's off. And so I had a, a me, I had a sit down with my, our money team and just said like, let's all of us look into it. And we were able to figure out where we thought it was coming from. And just like we thought it like righted itself, but it was easier for me to have someone else to work through that with and look at historical data and then look, into the future a little bit too. And so I know the story of what's happening on boots on the ground. Um, but from like a historical, we could say, oh, but this month last year, that's why it's also good when you have a few years of data. in, so you can see like this season, you know, summer is always slow. July has for the last three years been your slowest month. So if we're doing the least amount of revenue in July, let's try not to have a tremendous amount of expenses go through in July, right? So if you can, for example, licenses a lot of times renew sometime in the summer. So if you can push paying the license till August versus in July, or maybe you're not, maybe don't order a bunch of equipment in July when you know your revenue is going to be. Or put low. it on a credit, put it on a credit card or that line exactly. of credit, the, the debt that we were talking about. That's why in December, a lot of people are like, well, I'll start my bookkeeping next year. You know what I mean? Like I'll start next year. I'm just going to let my accountant do his thing with my like bank statements. I'm just going to call it a day. I argue, I, my my counter to that is I want you to have historical information. Right. And so we do what we call as a catch up where we take um, all the transactions, all of the information from the prior year and load it into QuickBooks. Two things, your um, taxes are going to be correct, right? Because you have the information loaded in. And two, you have that historical information. Like there's nothing better. And I get so excited about this and everyone's like, you're a dork, but <laughs> <laughs> there's just nothing better than being able to send a client. Like, here's how you're doing compared to prior year. Like know, here's spending changes. Here's the profit, the seasonality. Like you can see so much by having that prior year information. Yeah. I love being able to look at the data that way. You can, you can compare it to a previous period. So like this quarter, the last quarter, you can compare it to a previous year. You can compare it, you know, like I just, I think that the, the, they're just numbers and they kind of tell you everything. So I know this episode is going to air after Black Friday, but QuickBooks is having a, a Black Friday sale where I think it's like 70% off your first three months, but oh. we'll be too late. It'll be after Black Friday, but um, it is a well worth investment QuickBooks. Yes. So speaking of people that want to get their money in line and get a good money team on, tell people where they can find you because Kickstart Accounting, like I said, it's female founded. They've been working with our group. Um, she has an amazing team with her. And I just also really love the, like the data that you give people so that they, so people can stay on top of their numbers and they feel like they have really someone on their team. So where can people find you if they sh are setting an intention for getting their money in order in 2024? Yeah. Um, Kickstartedaccountinginc.com. Um, go to slash gift and there you can find some episodes on the podcast and there's some downloads available. So you can also book a call, but kickstartedaccountinginc.com is where you can find everything about the firm. Um, look at the, the podcast, Entrepreneur Money Stories. The ink is really important. I, I swear to God, this guy's going to hear me speaking one day and let me buy that damn URL. Uh, <laughs> um but Kickstarter Accounting Inc. And then um, go to Instagram where Kickstarter Accounting, always posting um, posts every week uh, based on the, the podcast with information that business owners need need to know. So it is a wealth of information for, for people. Um, yes, female founded, all, all of our employees go through a really lengthy extension uh, of, of training and mentorship. And we are 100% mission driven. Like we show up to work every single day, 
super excited because we get the opportunity to help you. We get the opportunity to make a difference in your business, your con- your community, the economy. So um, it's not like calling your tax account. It's like, well, yeah. let me let me tell you. Let me read through all the tax law. But and and that's why we've spoken about this too. Like we very firmly believe that putting the hand putting money in the hands of more women directly impacts communities and teaching women how to be more financially solvent and independent directly affects our family, our children, our parents, our siblings and our community and that's that's the mission both Danielle and myself have in in what we do from a business perspective really just teaching women how to be financially solvent in their business and and make the best, you know, decisions. And so if you're also interested in, so Danielle mentioned like having a business coach as part of your money team, Danielle's also part of our Beyond the Movement mentorship program. So she does coaching calls with both the Biz Foundations and the Inner Circle. Um, and I've gotten such amazing feedback from the clients that have become your clients yes. over, you know, and it, what's nice too is if we ever need something specific, like I could say, you know, Hey, Danielle, I don't know who, you know, let who's their rep, but like, this is the information they're looking for. Can, you know, you help them figure it out, which is people. Kind of it's a small business. You know it's what I mean? Like we get, business. yeah, we get to like, just work together in a really awesome, meaningful way. <laughs> yeah. And it's great and help women. So, yeah. so entrepreneur money stories is a really, really good podcast. Like I listen to it. I think it, does it drop on Tuesdays? Every Tuesday is our how to, yeah. to episode Thursdays, I a, a guest episode, but listen on Tuesdays and there's a whole backlog. Most of it's evergreen. So yeah. like we really built it out as a resource for my team and, and our clients. And the bonus is that everybody else gets to hear about it. So, um, there's a ton of information so you can keep on scrolling and it's all evergreen. Yeah. I like it. Ours, uh, my podcast airs on Tuesday too. So like I get yours and mine, like in the same. So yes. Tuesdays is the day I listen to yours. Um, and then follow her on Instagram, but then also you can visit kickstartaccountinginc.com. You can, I think she has like book a discovery call. So you can yeah. book a discovery book call, a call with her. I would definitely recommend if you don't have a bookkeeper and you don't have QuickBooks, get help putting it together. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. They're pros at it let them help you. And, um, we'll bring, Krista, can I, can I also say if like from the other yes. direction, which I don't think you probably get on this side of the, the mic very often is I think that you have created a group, um, of the most amazing women. And I think you do such a fantastic job in, in, in coaching them and supporting them. I've been involved with a lot of groups throughout the years. And I just think that you are like top-notch world-class, like Thank those you. women are so fortunate to have you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Uh, this summit was amazing. It's like yeah, my it really favorite was. thing to do. And, and I, I'm always asking the group too, you know, like, what do you feel about the mentorship? What do you, and everyone this year has been like, you know, having Danielle as part of the group has been like amazing. Cause there's a lot of questions too, that people have, and we feel I don't anymore, but you know, when I first came into business, I felt stupid asking those questions. Cause I was like, I'm a business owner. I should know, but yeah. we don't necessarily we don't know. know. Yeah. And it's nice to have a, a community where I know that our core values al- align and that we're yeah. supporting, we're supporting people in, in the community in the best way. Yeah. It's great. So we will definitely bring you back on to talk about debt mindset. And more money mindset because I think yeah I have it all like super important super yeah, important yeah. we can keep talking all day <laughs> thanks as always for joining us and for the rest of you check out Danielle's uh, podcast and until next time my friends bye for now. <laughs>